most people go to Hollywood to lose themselves. I went there to find myself. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. And that morning I asked myself, what if I was gonna die at the end of this year? It's about earning it and deserving it. And, and I have found in my life that when you feel like you have earned it and when you feel like you really deserve it, really, then you get it and not mm -hmm. before. Hey, Chandler Bolt here and joining me today is Clint Arthur. Uh, Clint, he's a PR and publicity savant. Uh, he's been on all sorts of uh, TV shows, all kind of publicity, the Today Show, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, a bunch of places. Um, he's also, uh, his most recent book, Wisdom of the Men, is uh, is his 21st self-published best-selling book. Uh, it was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize, uh, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and so we're going to dive into a lot of things, publicity, PR, um, how do you book publicity and use it to sell more books to grow your business. Um, I often talk about, I mean, I think this is like the untapped thing that so many people have the opportunity to do, uh, but they don't do it. <laughs> and how do you go from one to one to one to many, right? Well, a book is a great way to do that, but then a way to accelerate getting that that book into as many hands as possible is, is PR and publicity, which this guy knows a lot about. So Clint, welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here because I am a self-publishing believer, man. After I graduated from the Wharton Business School with a 4.0 GPA in entrepreneurship, I go home to get the congratulations from my parents and they get into the hugest fight and my dad storms out of the house and I turn to my mom and I go, you know, mom, the way he's been resenting you all these years, is that because you've been cheating on dad? And I'm thinking to myself, holy cow, where did that question even come from? I never even thought that before. And then I'm thinking, wow, how did I get to be such a rude person to ask my own mother a question like that? And then I'm thinking, how come mama ain't answering the question? And then she goes, he's not your real father. Your real father was a doctor at the fertility clinic we went to for six years trying to have you. And I think you'd look just like that guy. And I'm like, say what, mama? <laughs> and the next day comes, it's Monday. I call up the vice president of the investment bank on the 87th floor of number one World Trade Center. And I say, sir, I do appreciate the offer that you made me to come and live the life that every Wharton graduate has been dreaming of. And I've been dreaming of all these years, but I've decided I don't want to be an investment banker anymore. And what did I do? Naturally, I ran out to Hollywood. Now, most people go to Hollywood to lose themselves. I went there to find myself because I didn't know who I was or what I wanted to be when I grew up anymore. And I, I go there and I start going on auditions and writing screenplays. And I became a very special person, which was my goal all along. I always wanted to be a special person. I became the Wharton Business School taxi driver. That's right. And you know, when I started driving a taxi Chandler Bolt, the exact day that Penguin USA published my book as the big book of the summer, for Penguin USA. That's right. That book has gone on to sell more than 100,000 copies. But for the next six years, as my book was the big book for Penguin USA, I was driving yellow cab number 6087. And where were you on New Year's Eve of the millennium, partying with family and friends, getting some Y2K cash? I was behind the wheel of 6087. And in the backseat of the cab were these two guys who were MBA interns at Goldman Sachs. And I'm listening into their conversation as I'm driving them to a party in the Hollywood Hills. And one guy goes, hey, man, did you hear about Mr. Carrera? He became the last partner right before the Goldman IPO and he cashed out a gazillion dollars. And I'm like, are you guys talking about Chris Carrera? How do you know Mr. Carrera? Chris Carrera was a pledge in my fraternity. When I was a pledge master, I used to make those little punks dance around the living room of the house with their tidy whities on top of their heads. And now he just cashed out a gazillion dollars and he's not the only one. And I go home, like I had fraternity brothers who have become B billionaires, several of them. And I go home to my little boat that I'm living on in Marine Del Rey. I transform my pillow into a sponge, crying my eyes out, $513 driving a cab on New Year's Eve. I was supposed to be special. <laughs> and that's the night I said, I can't do this anymore. And I quit writing for the second time. I said, it's not worth it anymore. 
and eight years go by and I'm just trying to have a normal life. I just want to be, I just want to get fat and happy, make some money. I, I start selling gourmet food. I meet a beautiful woman. We get married. I start building houses. I get very fat and happy, obese. And it takes us through to 2008 when the world starts crumbling and I'm at a men's self-help campfire. What's that look like? 18 naked guys dancing around a campfire and I'm one of them and I'm watching the beautiful stars and I see this naked guy jump over the campfire and I noticed he was very hairy. And then I saw the shaman pointing at me across the yellow and orange crackling flames. You don't know it yet, but you're already dead. What are you talking about, man? I'm the most successful guy on this team. Eight years ago, I was a cab driver. Now I'm a millionaire. I was living on a little boat. Now I live, now I live in a mansion. You're already dead. You just don't know it. And I didn't know what the hell that guy was talking about. Excuse my friend, but I'm very passionate about this. But I could not stop thinking about what does he mean? I'm already dead. I think I'm alive. It comes to be New Year's Day, 2009. I ask myself the question that changed everything. You know what Tony Robbins says? He says, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the, your questions. And that morning I asked myself, what if I was gonna die at the end of this year? What if this was gonna be the last year of my life? What would I wanna accomplish? And I pulled out a pad of paper and a pen. And the first thing I listed down on that pad of paper was, I gotta write my book about what I learned at the Wharton Business School that made me successful as a businessman once I stopped trying to be a writer and an entrepreneur. And, and I'm sorry, a writer and a movie star. And I wrote that book in eight days, just came flying out of me. You know, it was pent up. I hadn't written anything in eight years. And I'm a writer. See, that's the problem. I am a writer. And I self-published it on Amazon.com. And I waited for the sales to roll in. And boy, did they ever. All eight of them rolled in that year. And I sought out a mentor. His name was Jack Canfield. I said, Jack, how do you sell half a billion chicken soup for the soul books? He says, you got to kind of be famous. Not really famous, just kind of famous. Because people don't buy books from nobodies. They only buy books from people who are somebody. And I didn't know anything else. So I hired a publicist. And I paid $6,000 for my first four TV appearances on local TV station. And I showed the videos to my wife on my computer. I said, honey, what do you think? And she goes, I think you suck. And I said, you're right. I, I really do need a lot more practice if I'm ever going to achieve my dream of getting on the Today Show to share my unique message. And so I'm going to hire this publicist for 10 more shows. And she goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do you keep paying this lady? Why don't you just book yourself on TV? And I'm like, how do you do that? And I started waking up every morning. Here's the thing about me. I have gone on to become Dan Kennedy's information marketer of the year, which is a pretty big deal. And I've been to a thousand Dan Kennedy seminars and lectures. And I've heard him say a million times, rich people work hard. And I am so grateful that I'm a hard worker because I started waking up every morning at 2.30 in the morning, going on Google, Googling ABC TV, Jacksonville, Florida, and all these different weird cities around the country where Southwest Airlines fly and calling them up and trying to book myself on a show. And it took me nine and a half weeks before I was able to do it. And I finally convinced this lady in Biloxi, Mississippi, W-L-O-X, to put me on her ABC affiliate for the morning show. And once I caught that fish, man, it was like, you know how catching a fish is, it's addictive. And I booked myself on six more shows that year. And the next year I booked 20 shows and people started asking me, how do you book yourself on TV? And I started teaching my friends and that evolved into a class called Celebrity Launchpad where I teach you how to pitch. I create your pitch for you. I, I pitch it for you and give you the recording. I invite my friends who are TV producers at ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. They come, they audition you for their shows. And I guarantee at least three of them invite you on their show or you get all your money back plus $1,000. That's why I won Dan Kennedy's Information Marketer of the Year Award. That We're now going to do our 55th Celebrity Launchpad. It's been a hugely impactful experience teaching thousands of authors, speakers, coaches, experts of every different kind. How do you get your message out? How do you become somebody who's kind of famous enough that people will actually buy your self-published book? Yeah, that's great. That's killer. So that's a great place to start. And well, so I got about 17 follow-up questions. <laughs> I told you you were going to like it. I and, told you. And so uh, I want, I want to, so I guess maybe let's start with the first, you, you, you kind of casually mentioned like 
two wild stats. Uh, one is the 100,000 books uh, of that first, or 100,000 copies sold of that first book. Well, and then backing up further than that, it, or, or, so does that mean you're off that uh, Netflix show about the doctor who has all those kids? Are you one of those? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> this is the <a> different <laughs> fertility doctor. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. That's I, just an I, Easter I egg. You dropped in that. All right. And so we can confirm it. Well, hey, it's man, not the Netflix show. Believe me, if I was, you would know that I, because I would <laughs> say it, you know, you got to, whatever you got to get everything you want, you got to use everything you've got. I really do believe that. No, I'm not that guy. So that's not you. Okay. Okay. So 100,000 <laughs> copies. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was just an Easter egg that you just dropped right in the beginning. And I'm like, I've watched that Netflix documentary, <laughs> uh, but no different one. Okay. So hundred thousand books of that, was that largely through publicity or were there other main things of that first book that helped you sell a hundred thousand copies? Hey, that there was a bit of, there was quite a bit of publicity on that. However, you know what booksellers are really good at distribution, book mm -hmm. publishers, book publishers. And in those days, we're talking 1995 to 2005. That's when most of those sales occurred. And the, that's like the golden era of bookstores, Barnes and Noble and, and, you know, all these different stores where people would go as a destination to hang out and browse, and, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so a lot of that was through distribution and bookstores and then, um, and then diving into PR. So you've already answered kind of some of my questions. Like, I think there's a lot of lessons just listening, just listening to that story. Cause I think a lot of people, when they think PR and publicity, it's research, 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 media kit, all these different things that don't involve just, I mean, your first thing was let me pick up the phone and start calling. And so you, That's you kind of cool. showed, yeah, <laughs> holding That's up your cool. phone. That's and, you you kind of you kind of uh, showed that path through your story, but let's maybe start there. Like how for someone who's listening to this, who's I have never done PR or publicity. What's the path to those first? Let's just say first opportunity. Maybe it's a, maybe it's on TV. Maybe it's in the newspaper. Whatever that thing. Like what do you think is the fastest path to that? Okay, look. When I started out, all I knew was TV. That's all I knew about and radio. I did some radio appearances. I was on some big shows, Coast to Coast AM with George Nouri. You know that show? Mm -mm. Third largest syndicated show in the world. It goes on 500 stations around the country. It rolls out over a week and the sales just keep rolling in and rolling in and rolling in. Amazing show. But what I have, like, see, when I won the award from Dan Kennedy, I thought that was it. I've, I've reached the goal line, right? I crossed the goal. And now I'm the winner. No, that was just the beginning because what I've discovered is that winning awards is just a different kind of marketing. Like I see you got those Inc. 5000 awards. Is that what you got back there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Those are awards. You didn't, you didn't go th through the goal when you won those awards. Those are just more pieces of marketing in your arsenal. Mm -hmm. What other kinds of mark? I, I call those PR too. Mm -hmm. Those are publicity. What other kinds of PR are there? When I won the award with Dan Kennedy, Dan Kennedy's essential message is, if you are not deliberately, systematically, methodically positioning yourself as a celebrity in the eyes of clients and prospects, then you are ignoring everything that's going on in our Western culture today. And when I really got that, after I won his Info Marketer of the Year Award, once I really started studying him, I decided that's all I'm going to do. And I've dedicated the last 10 years since I won the award in November of 2013. All I do is focus on how can I be a bigger who in the eyes of clients and prospects and winning awards is a great type of publicity. So is TV. But there are three other kinds that are mm -hmm. really, really good. Mm -hmm. And you know what my favorite one is? Hanging out with major celebrities and getting pictures with them. And I have pictures with every major celebrity in the world. If you Google Clint Arthur and you look at the image results, you're going to see pictures of me with Martha Stewart and John Travolta, five presidents of the United States, Mick Jagger and Ringo Starr, Mike Tyson, Jack, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. I I've met every major celebrity working today, and I wrote about it in my wisdom which is about all the smartest things that I learned from the most famous international superstars and five presidents of the United States. I put all of that into a book because that in itself is a publicity tool called celebrity attachment. And that's- So you got favorite. celebrity attachment. So that's one of them. So you said pictures with celebrities. You said- Pictures TV. and stories. Pictures and stories. And I invented yeah. that. I call that celebrity storytelling. Uh -huh. And that's my whole entire book 
wisdom of the men is all celebrity storytelling. And that is a PR tool that I invented. Okay. Then you got TV as a second one. You've got awards as a third one. What are the other two? Speaking at very important places. Hey, I've had the great privilege to share this exact message at Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, West Point, the London Stock Exchange, the Royal Society of Medicine, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Coca-Cola, and even at NASDAQ and Carnegie Hall. You see what I just did there? What's that? Does that it's like sound edifying? Like, what do, you, what do you think about my message now that you've heard where it had been shared? Mm -hmm. So edifying through speaking in important places. Um, what's, what's number five? The fifth one is, of course, best-selling books. Best, nothing, nothing. So look, you want to get involved in media, you got to have a best-selling book. You, you got to have it. It used to be that you had to be published by Penguin USA to get on TV. Not anymore. I've been on the biggest TV shows with my self-published children's book called Daddy Loves You. It's 24 pages of like little children's drawings that I did myself for my daughter when she was a year old and her mother kicked me out of the house because I was a cab driver. See, unless you get this, your life is going to be ruined like mine was when I got, could you imagine getting kicked out of the house that you're paying for where your little one-year-old daughter is living because you're a loser cab driver and your wife's career is taking off and she doesn't want you as dead weight. That's what happened to me because I didn't get this. See, people ask me a lot of times, do you resent the 13 years you spent chasing the Hollywood dream? And I say, not exactly because they taught me the most important lesson in business. And they don't teach this at Harvard Business School, I know, because when I spoke at Harvard's faculty club with, at an event sponsored by the Entrepreneurship Club of Harvard Business School, I asked the president of that club, do they teach my topic at Harvard? No, nobody talks about this at Harvard. They don't teach it at Wharton because I wrote the book, What They Teach You at the Wharton Business School, and this ain't in that <laughs> book. They don't teach it at USC Business School. My daughter graduated USC. I spoke at the business school. I asked the professor whose class I spoke at, do they teach this? No, nobody teaches this. Even in Hollywood, they don't teach this. But when I went on the Today Show, I was I was invited on the Today Show, December 31st, 2013. Hi, Clint. This is Allie calling from the Today Show. We were wondering if you could join us in studio for a segment on how to have a powerful new year. I show up there. Who is interviewing me? Brooke Shields. And they could have hired a million people to interview Clint Arthur on the Today Show, but they hire Brooke Shields. Why? Because of the most important thing in business, who you are is more important than what you actually do. You think Brooke Shields is the greatest interview in the world? She's not. There's a million Columbia Journalism School graduates who are way better interviews than her, but they're no, and she is Brooke Shields. And that's why they paid her a lot of money. And that's why they didn't hire all those nobodies. And Dan Kennedy put it like this. He goes, I had a problem. My wife broke her wrist and I knew I needed an operation on my wife's wrist. What I did not know was who I was going to pay a lot of money to fix my wife's wrist. And ultimately, being a bigger who is what this is all about. That's great. I hope you're loving this episode so far. So if you're serious about writing and publishing your book, we would love to chat with you and help create a custom plan. All right, so all you need to do right now is go to selfpublishing.com forward slash schedule. Schedule a 45-minute consultation with one of the experts on my team. All right, let's implement what you're learning in this episode and let's see how we can help with your book. Go to selfpublishing.com forward slash schedule. So let, let's walk back to the, um, the I think the TV component of that five. Um, and I, I want to unpack kind of um, the, it, so say I'm an, I'm an author, right? Just published. Yep. And now I'm thinking, all right, I'm, I'm uh, maybe I'll just publish or I'm about to publish. I'm listening to this episode right now. I'm thinking, Clint, this sounds awesome. How do I, how do I book my first win? And let's go specifically in the TV bucket. Um, what would you say are like the two or three steps for someone um, to get their first win and their first yes um, to getting on TV to talk about um, their book? Okay. First of all, you got to have your name.com. Or if you're a balloon decorator, like my client, Sandy Missouri, I told her to get balloonexpert.com. And three weeks later, she was on the Today Show. After she came through Celebrity Launchpad, she did 18 TV appearances, and then she was on the Today Show. And that's not going to happen for most people. Getting on the Today Show is 
something that you should aspire to. It took me three years and 57 appearances to get there. And I'm grateful for all the time and experience I got in the process because it's scary as hell to be on the Today Show. Ask Hal Elrod. He's one of my students. He graduated from Celebrity Launchpad. I know he's speaking at your conference. When you're on the Today Show, there's a thousand lights in the ceiling and 10 cameras, and it's a lot of pressure. You don't want that as your first appearance. You want to go on little tiny local shows and don't go on your own hometown show. Why? Go on that last. It's it's easy to get on that show because you're local. They want to help local people. That's part of their mission is to be a public service to the local community, to help the local community. But you should never go on your local show until you've been on 20 or 30 shows all around the country learning how to be a great TV guest because it's Hmm. not as easy as you think it is. You and I make it look easy because we do a lot of video. Mm. I've been on 135 TV appearances all over the world. I know how to do it and it just is easier for me to do this, but this ain't easy. So the first things I would do is I would say, try to get on some little podcasts so that you have Mm -hmm. experience and you can explore what is your real message? What are some of the talking points that sound good, come out of your mouth good and make an impact? Okay, that's a great place to start. Number two, well, that is that is number two. Number one is getyourname.com or, or your expertise.com. Number two is get on some podcasts. Number three would be to shoot video, selfie video. Really, you got to start learning how to be on video. It's a big, big, more difficult thing. It's so much harder than being on audio alone. So much harder. So start shooting selfie video and learning how to get good on video. I 30 or 60 day YouTube challenge where you put a one minute video on YouTube every so you can get Mm -hmm. looking at yourself Mm -hmm. sucking on video because you will suck like I did, like my wife told me, you will suck, but you will get better. Look, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started if you ever want to be great. And this is a long and really I, I want people to understand that PR is not a get rich quick scheme. It is mm-hmm. not going to just instantly turn you into a best-selling author. Even if you're on the Today Show, unless you're James Comey and they're doing a 15-minute expose on your book, A Higher Calling, that's the only way that you're going to get a lot of sales from your book. When I was on the Today Show with my book, Break Through Your Upper Limits on TV, nobody bought the book. Even though they featured it prominently on the Today Show, nobody bought it. So why do, why bother, Clint? Why even go on the Today Show if nobody bought it? Because it's not the book sales you get from going on the Today Show. It's the book getting you on the Today Show so that you can make millions of dollars. That's what it's really about. I've made many millions of dollars from my photos with Brooke Shields and Willie Geist, from the video that I've used and repurposed and putting it in my sizzle reel. Media is about generating high status marketing assets and mm, videos, I see. photos. It's don't go on somebody's show thinking that you're going to get new audience. You're not going to get a lot of audience. You're going to get media assets that you can then repurpose and redeploy on your target because ultimately, Chandler, you think that Tony Robbins is famous? I'd say so. You'd say he's famous, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I say Tony Robbins is nobody. I say 99.5% of Americans have no idea who is Tony Robbins. And I'll prove it. Hey, do you know who Tony Robbins is? Yeah. I showed you his picture. You recognize him? Yeah. You thought you knew who he was, right? You have no idea. No, I actually don't. I thought he was an actor. He's not an actor. No. No. Okay. 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 It's just one. Hey, anybody here know who Tony Robbins is? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you know who Tony is? No? How about you? You know who he is? Nobody. Now, I know you're thinking, well, that's just the wrong demographic, Clint. Yeah, maybe it is the wrong demographic. Let's look at a different demographic. How about how about these two guys? Where are they? They're my favorite guys. Come here we go. What do you think of Tony Robbins? You know who he is? Um, who the fuck's that guy? <laughs> no, really. Do you know who he is? No. Y'all know who he is? <laughs> okay, now look, I love Tony Robbins. I got a text message from Tony's team and said, hey, if you donate $25,000 to Tony's favorite charity, you could be the host of 60th birthday party in Los Angeles. It took me less than 60 seconds to donate that money. He's had the hugest impact in my life. And when I saw him that night, I said, Tony, when I was a cab driver, I couldn't afford to buy the CDs. I had to buy the tape set. 
cassettes because they were $30 cheaper. And today I was sitting in the front row. He's like, I'm so happy it worked out for you, brother. And he gives me a big kiss on the cheek. And I said, Tony, what's the most important thing you ever learned? He said, life is happening for us. Okay. So I, now look, Tony Robbins had six episodes and then he was off NBC forever with his show Breakthrough with Tony Robbins because he's nobody. He's not famous. 99.5% of the people in America don't know who he is. But to you and me, he's a god. I think he's a god. Well, I would I would like cut off my right arm if I could get on Tony's stage, right? Most people would. But or, or, or even just get to hang out with him for a while. <laughs> I love him so much. He's had such an impact to me. But he's what I call a celebrity entrepreneur. And that's what we have to be. We have to create a niche that we're going after. I go after authors, speakers, coaches, experts. And I deploy marketing assets on all those people that make me look like I am a celebrity. I, I make sure they see me in photos with major celebrities. I make sure they see me on TV. I make sure they see me speaking at Harvard and Oxford and Mercedes and NASDAQ and all those places. I make sure they see me with my best-selling books. And I make sure, by the way, my book has been on the bestseller list for biographies of the rich and famous for three months on Amazon now. And I'm, I'm like... I'm a, who am I showing up next to? Prince Harry, King Charles. Those are, those are the rich, and, right? Those are the rich and famous, not Clint Arthur, but I wrote a book about all these rich and famous people and that's how I'm getting on there. And then I make sure that they know about my awards. I was on Success Magazine's top 10 entrepreneurs of 2022. That's one of my awards. So this is what I call celebrity entrepreneurship. It's bigger than just TV. That's mm -hmm. what I learned over this experience of 10 years of studying how do you really become somebody special in the eyes of clients and prospects i developed this thing called celebrity entrepreneurship i self-published a book about it and it's on amazon and uh this is what i call celebrity entrepreneurship and this is what i and my clients many of whom become my friends are are studying and implementing in our careers so that we can sell more books, seminar tickets, coaching, consulting, and other high price expert services. Mm -hmm. This is great. So I want, I want to, I want to jump back a little bit and I want to go, you, you, you talked about kind of all the different ways to get your first, your first gig. And, and the thing that really stuck out to me that I want to kind of double click on is you said, not your hometown first. Why right. is that? I think a, a lot of people would think myself included, it's like, well, why would you not just go for the first quickest win? go hometown, leverage hometown to go to other places. Is that, are you saying do that last because you want to really do that well? Or what's the why behind that? Yeah, because ideally you want to become a regular recurring guest on your local home TV station. Oh, I see. My I client, see, I see. Dr. Deborah Matthew, who all she does is send an email to the producer. Hey, it's hormone month. Can I come in next week? And she's like, yeah. And now she's done like 30 appearances. And when you live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you're showing up on Great Day Charlotte once a month for two years, your life is gonna change. You're gonna become an actual celebrity in that town. When you're doing the, mon the Monday morning money minute every single Monday because you're a CPA or a financial advisor, your life is going to change in that town. People are gonna start recognizing It's a great you. idea. And, and you know, when you- How do you do that? Like, how, how do you create that, that type of relationship? Obviously, you've got to get, you got to get on there once and you got to do well, but yeah. any tips on how to become a recurring guest on your hometown, uh, yeah. on your hometown network? Yeah. Be smart and go on 50 TV shows all over the country. And some of them are going to want you back and start going back. And this is the real power. One of my students, Rafi Andoni, he came to Celebrity Launchpad and got four appearances that he did. And then a year went by and he goes, you know, I'm going to come back to Celebrity Launchpad. He came back the second time, which was a year ago, and he's done 61, 61 more appearances in the last year. And how do you do that? By going on the same shows over and over and over and see what happens is he says all, all the juice is in the cracks. It's what happens in between the time, the three minutes that you're on the air, when you're just hanging out, when you're backstage getting your makeup done with the host. All these little things, having little conversations, if you can take the host out to lunch, all these opportunities create more for you 
And really, look, this is not about you pretending to be a great TV guest. There's there's no pretending. Either you're great or you're not. And that's the mm -hmm. beauty of video. And you understand that. You do a lot of video. People can see when you know what you're doing on video. And they can see when you're nervous. And they can see when you're full of BS. And they can see when they when you're not really knowing what you're talking about or when you do know what you're talking. And you can only get that from doing lots of TV. So go do 50 TV appearances and then go to your local hometown station and hit them with an amazing segment that's perfect for them. And when you're in there, then you say, hey, you know what? I've done 50 shows all around the country. And like, these are my top five segments that I've done that I think would be perfect to do next. Can I come back like once a month? Mm, and that's it, great. You know, it's I like it's that about, a lot. It's about earning it and deserving it. And, and I have found in my life that when you feel like you have earned it and when you feel like you really deserve it, really, then you get it and not mm -hmm, before. Mm -hmm. That's great. Have you do you find that there's a big difference between like say the uh booking a local show and booking uh, like to, the Today Show, is it the same approach, just different contacts, or is it a totally different approach to how you do that? Well, it's impossible to get anybody at the Today Show on the phone. It really is. Like you call up, they won't even put you through. Are they expecting <laughs> your call? They won't even put you through. Okay. <laughs> There's, they're, they're getting hit on by 10 billion people every single day. So to get on the Today Show is uh, like almost a miracle, almost a miracle. But, mm -hmm. you know, it happens. I mean, they literally called me because, I, and how did that happen? How, what's my best advice to get on the Today Show? How did, how did I do it? Well, first of all, it was my 57th appearance in three years. And 30 of those appearances were on the topics of New Year's resolutions in one form or another. And I became known by producers all across the country. Oh, cool. Guy who did great New Year's segments. And that's what they had me on for, the mm -hmm. push and pull of life in the new year. That's what they wanted me to talk about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what they really, like, you know, it, it's very hard when you go on these shows because you got to try to understand what do they really, really want. And what they really wanted from me was, how do you know when to quit? How, did, how come after 13 years of chasing the Hollywood dream, why did you finally quit? That's what they really wanted to know. And- I've, I've thought about that question a lot because look, there's a lot of writers out there who've been writing a long time, like I did, you know, 13, I wrote 30 feature film screenplays and 10 books during those 13 years, one of which was published by Penguin USA and sold 100,000 copies. And then I quit writing for eight years. Why? Well, I feel like I, everyone kept telling me Hollywood is a 10 year town. It takes 10 years to make it in Hollywood, 10 years. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, in, I'm due. 11 years came, I'm overdue. 12, man, I'm really overdue after 12 years. 13 freaking years came and these guys are in the back of my cab talking about how my fraternity brother is a centimillionaire. And I'm like, what am I doing? You know, how long can I keep pretending that this is ever going to happen? Because ultimately what I have discovered now, you know, look, when I would, when I, I, I travel a lot, I'm a top 1% money earner in the National Speakers Association, okay? I make a lot of money as a speaker and I've traveled. I used to spend 200 nights a year in Marriott hotels for 10 years. And whenever I would come in from a foreign trip, they ask you, what do you do for a living? And I would always say, sales. Now I say, I'm an author. And the reason is, and, and there's a chapter about this in my book, Wisdom of the Man. This is called Your Metier. See, one day I was in the kitchen. I, I, I have a gourmet food company. I told you, I started selling gourmet food. Then I met a woman, got fat and happy, right? Because I was in the gourmet food industry, I became obese. And one day I was on a sales call. It was Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I told you I'm a hard worker. I'm in, I'm in a kitchen at the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas, hanging out with the executive chef of the Danielle Boulou Brass Wynn. You ever been there? Nope, never. Very nice restaurant. This guy... You know, those little stick wand, those wand frothers, and you make your little cappuccino in your cup. Oh, yeah. Yep. He's got one the size of a baseball bat, and he's stirring a pot of lobster bisque. And I go, Philippe, what are you doing, man? You're the executive chef of a multi-million dollar restaurant, 20 sous chefs. Why don't you have one of those guys stirring this pot of soup? He goes, because I love it. This is my métier. See, the métier is what you love. This is something you would do even if they didn't pay you. And that's the problem. Most people would write and do write because 
They're writers like I am. I'm a writer. Unfortunately, I'm a Why am I a writer? When I was in high school, you know who my creative writing teacher was? He's a guy named Frank Bacourt. Maybe you heard of his book, Angela's Ashes. It won the Pulitzer Prize for his memoir about his impoverished childhood in Ireland. He inspired all of us to want to be writers because he became rich and famous around the world as a writer because of his Pulitzer Prize winning book. So I'm a writer. And the problem is when your metier is something that you love doing, people would say, how are you doing in Hollywood, Clint? Are you making any money? And I would say, I don't even care about the money. I work. Dude, you got to care about the money. If you don't make money, you better either be a trust fund baby, which I'm not. You better have an inheritance, which I don't. You better have a, a wife who supports you, which I don't. You better have a job that pays you a lot of money, which I didn't. Taxi driving didn't pay me a lot of money. I was surviving. You can't do that forever unless you make some money. So what you have to do is you must figure out how do you make money on the back of the book? And to me, what I have discovered and what makes me a top 1% money or National Speakers Association is not because I go to and give speeches and collect a check because you ever hear of Ron Legrand? Mm -mm. He's a real estate seminar salesman. And Dan Kennedy always had a great joke. He would always say, at the end of the world, after the nuclear apocalypse, there's going to be two things left, the cockroaches and Ron Legrand selling a real estate seminar. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard Ron Legrand say at, at one of Dan Kennedy's events, when he was selling from the stage, he said, hey, look, if you think that being a speaker is about going someplace and collecting a check, you don't understand the speaking game. It's not about that. It's about selling packages of stuff, which includes a live seminar where they come and then they enroll for your coaching and consulting. That's where all the money is coaching and consulting. So that's why I say you got to understand all the money is on the back of the book. And if you want, if you love being a writer, if writing is metier, you mm. need to understand how do you make money as a writer? Because it ain't going to be from selling books. You may even, you know, look, there's some people like Hal Elrod, God bless him, right? The last time I talked to him, I had him as a speaker at my conference at Carnegie Hall. And there's a great video in the bonus videos that you get when you buy a copy of Wisdom of the Men, you get a big collection of bonus videos. And one of them is Hal Elrod explaining how do you sell 2 million books? And he's told me he's getting an $8 royalty per book. You can do the math. God mm -hmm. bless. Most people don't make a lot of money from selling books. Would you agree with that, Chandler? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's what you're saying. It's, it's, what, it's beyond the book, right? And using the book um, to grow your business. And, and I love that, you know, kind of speaking in PR is a bridge to that. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm really kind of long on, long on questions and short on time. So let's, let's end this here and I'll, I'll go two-parter. So what will be your parting piece of advice? Um, knowing what you know now about PR and publicity to people who are looking to pursue that for the first time. And then where can people go to find out more about you, your books, what you're up to? Okay. My best piece of advice for somebody who's trying to start with PR is you got to have a great smart website that's either your name.com or whatever you're the expert of.com because that makes you somebody. Think you got to have an email address like that. Just think, would Tony Robbins ever be Tony46.97 at gmail.com? No. And on that website, the easiest, fastest, most powerful thing you can do is have pictures of you with famous people. And that you should start out with your mayor of your town, CEOs of major corporations, a congressman, a senator, anybody you can get a selfie with who's somebody. That is the most powerful way because you got to remember to the media who's getting hit on all the time by everybody. And most of those people, or not most, but a lot of those people are somebody like, you know, even me. I'm somebody, I got a lot of media that I'm depleting to make think I'm somebody. You got to position yourself as somebody and you got, there's no, there's no shortcuts in, in BSing these producers. They can look at you and tell if you're for real in a second. So you got to start for real developing your media assets and building it up so that you can be positioned to your most important client and prospect 
who is a media producer, that's the most important person that you're trying to influence with your website is the producer who's evaluating for their podcast, their radio show, or their TV show. They've got to think that you are somebody. And if you do those couple of things, the website, the email address, and the photos, that's going to help you a lot. Then you need video and you got to get some video somehow. You got to do that. And um, speaking at very important places is great and winning awards and best you, your book. If your book is not a bestseller, you're not working hard. Enough. Sorry, you're not. Where can you find out more about me? My books are on Amazon. Clint Arthur, Clint like Clint Eastwood, Arthur like the king. That's that's my name, how you remember it. Or you could go to my website, clintwith3ts.com. Why clintwith3ts.com? Because one of the experts that I worked with invented the science of nameology, which means what does your name mean? And she said to me one time, Clint, I wish you had an extra T at the end of your name because the T's always end up on trop, on top, like Trump. And whatever you think of his politics, the guy ended up at the top. So I couldn't get Clint with two T's.com, but I could get Clint with three T's.com. And that's the best place to go to find out about all of my books, seminars, mentorship, and all the ways that I can help you. And I love helping authors because know how hard it is. Really, my life I, I have had my life ruined by being a writer. And now my life is the greatest because I'm a writer. That's awesome, Clint. Uh, well, guys, uh, check it out. Clint with three T's.com. Um, check out the books uh, and implement what you learned here today um, to get some more PR and publicity. Again, we, we started this episode. I'll end this episode with what we started with, which is this is such a key thing that can help you sell more books and grow your business. And I talk about it a lot to our authors. I'm like, hey, you should do this. And 1% of the 1% of the 1% actually do it. <laughs> uh, and, and, and just every time, you know, we have our big conference coming up um, at the time of recording this and, and uh, we're going to talk about it. And I know that not a lot of people are going to implement it. Uh, and it's just, it's so key. So Clint, thank you so much. You know why? You know why they that? implement it? Because they're afraid they're going to fail. That's why. Yeah. And you got to get over that fear. You are going to fail. You are going to be told, no, thank you, but you got to hear a thousand, no, thank yous before you're going to get one. And you're going to have mm -hmm. to that one. You got to start somewhere. You're going to suck when you start and you have to suck when you start so that you can get better. And that's the only way you can do it. It's, it is not a get rich, get, get rich quick scheme, but it is an essential piece of being a real author. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, Clint, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of the Self-Publishing School Podcast. I know there's so many places that you could be spending your time. There's other podcasts that you could be listening to, YouTube channels that you could be watching. So thank you so much. It means the world. Now, I want you to do three things right now if you found this episode helpful. I don't know if you know this, but we've got a YouTube channel. It's a companion channel to this podcast. All the video versions of the episode are on the YouTube channel. So number one, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Number two, if you're listening to this podcast, wherever, whether this is Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Number two, I want you to subscribe to this podcast right now so you don't miss a future episode. And then number three, this is probably the most important, leave a review on the podcast. All right, reviews are super important and help this podcast get discovered by other people. So number three, leave a review on the podcast. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next episode.